Hi, I'm Lauren Bregetzer, the audio professor, and I'm going to show you the proper way to save your audio sets in Ableton Live so that all of your samples and stuff are there. Because um, oftentimes we use external sample packs. Um, maybe I use uh, packs from Ableton Live that aren't part of Live Suite and somebody else is does not have that. Um, but, and I wanted to share that. I'll show you that in the second half. But first thing I want to do is show you how to gather everything for yourself, for your own, for archival purposes or for collaboration. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I have this live set up from the last video I made. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I have basically a MIDI clip from a drum rack that I have, you know, uh, that's a pack. It's, I think it's from the Synthwave pack. Um, I have two Oliver clips from... Uh, splice samples that I've grabbed, and I have this other four sample that I grabbed off my hard drive. Now, so there's a couple of samples, not huge samples, and then some packs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see how big hit save here. And if I look at the file size here, um, it's this Groove Pool project. I can see my Mac here that it's uh, 430k, which definitely doesn't have those drum loops in there. And I can click here and there's no samples folder. So the main thing you want to do all the time is go under file, go to collect all and save. And I'll give you a pop-up window here. Um, and just those default three yeses and one no is fine. I hit okay. And what's going to do is I'm going to take all the samples that I have and combine them and place them in that folder. So I can actually take that folder and bring it to a different computer, um, give it to a friend, and they can collaborate on this project. Now, the downside is that now I can see this project. If This isn't updating, but uh, the project is now 4.2 megabytes. So it has those audio files on there because there's a samples folder and I can click on there and see all the samples that I used in that project. So it takes all my samples and puts them in one single folder. So now all I need to do to send to a friend or to archive is to grab this project folder once I use the collect all and save function. This allows us to have multiple hard drives but still condense them all into one session with all the samples used. Now, the downside is uh, my friend who I might collaborate with on the song um, theoretically, this is not anything's going to be used, but uh, this is an Ableton Live pack, so it's copy protected. And so if he doesn't have this pack, he doesn't have these samples, he won't be able to play it. So what I want to do is I want to either freeze it or flatten it. So what freezing does is that temporarily writes an audio file to replace the MIDI file and instrument there. So basically it writes the output onto a separate file. So it has something that it can play back. So in doing that, I can always go back when it gets sent back to me and open it back up again. So what I'm going to do is to do this, I'm going to go under, click on this track. I'm going to go under edit. I'm going to go freeze track. It's going to take a second. And if you have any audio in the arrangement view, it would do the same thing to both the arrangement and the session view clips. Now, when I launch this clip here, it's technically playing back an audio file. So even though I see MIDI data, I can't change anything. If I go to try to change something in one of the macros here, I can't do it. I can't audition anything. It just gives me this frozen look, this blue color. So what I can do now is flatten that. So if I want to keep this, flatten writes this. So this is a this is a MIDI track playing a drum rack. And so what flattening will do is it'll actually take this and write this whole thing out as an audio file. So I'm going to write, once it's frozen, you can then flatten it. So if I click on this track again, and I go to flatten under the edit window, flatten track. And you can see it's changed that, that frozen track name. And now I actually have, you know, this clip there. So it even loops it appropriately. It gives us two bars in case there's any trailing reverb in there. So the loop section has that trailing reverb. So that's how freezing and flattening works. Now, this I can't go back and change that because I've written over that. So a couple of practices that you may want to do, I'm going to hit Command-Z to undo both the freezing and the flattening. You just go to edit unfreeze track. One thing that you might want to do is to duplicate that track so that you can always go back to the original one and maybe just freeze and flatten this one here. Edit, 
freeze track, and then flatten track. I can just mute this track and sort of hide it over here. So I can always go back to that, but I have my, you know, printed loop right here. So that's how you can collaborate with people that may not have the same packs as you, may not have the same instruments as you, um, and you can share Ableton Live sets with them this way. So thank you, and hopefully you find this helpful and enjoy making music.